Hi friends, after my last videos about uh, State Bank of India and Karnataka Bank, many people requested me to talk about Kendra Bank. And that too after uh, the amalgamation of Syndicate Bank with Kendra Bank. Uh, there is higher curiosity, they want to know what's going to happen to their money. Is it safe to keep our money in Kendra Bank? What is the current NPA or gross NPA of uh, Kendra Bank? What is going to happen there? What is the capital adequacy ratio? Have they taken care of these aspects? So in this video, I'm going to give you the complete details about Kendra Bank. Of course, Kendra Bank and Syndicate Bank. So before we start, in case if you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please subscribe now. Hit the bell icon to enable notifications and uh, Please share this video with your friends and family. Let's look at it one by one. Uh, to start with, uh, Kendra Bank was founded in the year 1906 uh, in, the, in, in Mangalore, uh, the coastal city of Karnataka. And even Syndicate Bank uh, was started in Udupi, the way close to Mangalore. And uh, this was in the year 1925. So which means Kendra Bank has completed almost 114 years. And Syndicate Bank is going to complete 100 years in the next four years. By 2025, they're going to complete uh, 100 years. So on 30th of August 2019, Nirmala Sitaraman announced the amalgamation of Syndicate Bank with Kendra Bank. And because of that, today, Kendra Bank is the fourth largest public sector bank in India with uh, total assets worth about 15.2 lakh crores. So we'll get to that in some time, but we need to talk about other things today uh, so we need to discuss about uh, the ownership of uh, Kendra Bank so post uh, this amalgamation about 78-79 percent of Kendra Bank is with government of India so government of India owns the largest part of uh, Kendra Bank so which which gives you that confidence that okay if something goes wrong we government will take care right that is the uh, problem here. But then, uh, in fact, when I started studying more about Kendra Bank, I was shocked. The numbers are very bad. I will tell you more in detail. But uh, I think this is the problem, right? You know, every time a bank goes wrong, uh, government bails them out with taxpayers' money, which is not good. Because that's going to put the economy into a bad shape. Because you can't lend money to a wrong person and then make innocent taxpayers... Uh, uh, you know, uh, to pay that, right? You know, that's not right. Anyway, coming back to the uh, ownership, 78.5% uh, is with government of India and about 3% uh, is with the mutual fund institutions, about 2-2.5% uh, two, with the financial, foreign institutional investors and about 6-6.5% uh, six, with insurance companies and the rest with the public. So when we talk about um, the key statistics of... Uh, uh, these two banks Kendra Bank has about 6 lakh crore of deposits I mean they've collected about 6 lakh crore of deposits from the public and about 2 lakh 60 thousand by syndicate bank so put together they have about uh, 8 lakh 60 thousand worth deposits collected from the public but they've given away only about uh, 6 lakh 30 thousand crore worth loans and advances to the public together from both the banks about 4 lakh 30 thousand crore from uh, uh, by Kendra Bank and about 2 lakh crore by uh, Syndicate Bank put together about 6 lakh 30 thousand crore uh, so which means the remaining money that is about 2 lakh 30 thousand crore is being invested in other uh, corporate bonds and other uh, government securities with uh, RBI and other uh, places Together they have about 10,391 branches and they have about 12,829 uh, ATM centers and they have about 91,685 employees and their current market capitalization is about 12,000 crores and their uh, shares are currently trading at about 82-83%. Uh, As you know Kendra Bank has a lot of uh, subsidiaries, Mo many of them are very small in nature, I don't really talk about them, but then Canfin is one of their uh, largest uh, subsidiary, they have about 30% stake there, and then they have Ken, uh, Kendra Robacco Asset Management Company, they have about 51% stake, it's a mutual fund house, and then uh, Kendra HSBC Oriental Life Insurance Company, where they have about 51% stake, then there are many other smaller uh, 
subsidiaries as well with 100% ownership. So what is most important to be discussed now is, is Kenra Bank safe to invest our money? Yes, there is one part to be looked at. You know, government of India owns majority stake here. That's, that makes it easy and that makes it easy to say that, okay, it's safe. But then let's look at the numbers. The gross NPA is about 8.63% uh, for Kenra Bank uh, post -amalgam pre-amalgamation and about 11% for uh, uh, Syndicate Bank which means uh, on average they come to about 9, 9.5% which means they have given away about 6.3 lakh crore of loans out of 6.3 lakh crore of loan their current NPA stands gross NPA stands at about 9, 9.5% which means about 50 8,000 crore, 58,000 crore is their gross NPA. So, which means it is the bad in the industry compared to all other banks, this is the bad worst, right? 9, 9.5% nine of gross NPA is worst. What is gross NPA? Any loan which is not being serviced for the last three months, where the interest or the EMI is not being serviced for three months is called as NPA. The net NPA for Kendra Bank is 5.4% and about 6% for Syndicate Bank. Together it comes to about 5, 5.5%. Which means, again, which means it is about 30,000 crore of uh, gross, 30, 32,000 crore of, you know, uh, uh, gross, uh, sorry, net NPA. Which means, what does it say, you know, they have literally taken taxpayers money for granted i'll tell you why every time they make mistakes they lend money they lose money government has to bail them out whose money government is giving there it is taxpayers money right every time if they keep bailing them out how is it going to work hdfc bank the prestigious private sector bank their gross npa is 1.4 percent net npa is 0.5 percent even if it is double of HDFC, it's okay. But look at it now. So what is the difference between gross NPA and net NPA? They have about 58, 59,000 crore of gross NPA. Net NPA is about 30, 32,000 crore, which means this gap about 28,000 crore. This is the provisions they've already created from their profit. So if in case more than that doesn't come back, then the bank is in risk. If it, is, if it doesn't come back, then government will have to bail them out. Then when I look at the capital adequacy ratio, about 11.9% uh, for uh, Kendra Bank and about 14% for Syndicate Bank. See, now, of course, this is in line with what is being prescribed by uh, uh, Reserve Bank of India. But then at whose cost are they managing this, maintaining this? It is being maintained at the cost of taxpayers, right? Unless until government bail them out quite you know, frequently, this is not going to happen. In fact, this is because of inefficiency in the system. I am of the opinion that for a bank of this size, 93, 94,000 employees is just meaningless. They don't really need them. Why do they need? Even if they want to retain all of them, then probably they'll have to see how they can churn these people really well and drive revenue through them. They are really reluctant to even interact with customers. The kind of service they're offering is bad. That's why people are moving away and that's why you know, they're, they're, because the people are not really serious, they're lending loan to everyone and because of that today the NPA is increasing. I am concerned about it because, not because if you have a bank account with Kendra Bank, if you have your deposits with Kendra Bank, uh, you know, you will lose it because the government will ensure it is taken care. But then, at whose cost? It is, with the, it is at the cost of the taxpayer. I'm concerned about it because of that. We, the taxpayers, we pay money to the government to make our country better, make our infrastructure better, make our education system better, uh, system better, make our healthcare better. But unfortunately, what is happening today? Government is giving this money to these banks for their mistake, which means the bank's management is not good, right? This is not a problem across India. Why is it happening only with this bank? Why is it so bad, 9%? So I think there is something to be really looked at it. 8.5%, 9%, 11% with Syndicate Bank is a bad. I mean, amalgamation of two bad apples is only going to create another bad apple. Now, unless until they really 
discipline the management unless until they discipline the system there it's going to be bad it, it's only growing in fact this is this was not the case in 2015 it is only at a upward trend the npa gross npa net npa is at a upward trend it is only increasing which means the system is creating a problem i really don't know who is behind this but then things have to be fixed on priority as quickly as possible otherwise you know the banking system i mean because we can't afford as a nation we can't afford to lose such large mammoth banks because to 1906 or 1925 when these banks were started by mangalorians they started with a noble cause but unfortunately i think it is not being served now not just giving money to the you know people you know it is also a, the responsibility of the bank to ensure it is being collected because it is people's money they are giving they are not giving their money right so it is important to fix it i really don't know when they'll fix it but my feedback my recommendation kendra bank as long as government of india holds majority stake it is safe but try and diversify don't keep all your eggs in one basket that's my final suggestion on this same time in case if you have not had subscribed to financial freedom app please do it right now financial freedom app link is available in the description box both in android and ios it's available financial freedom app is going to change the way you live your life i'll tell you how think about it today we want to do so many things about money we want to avail loan we want to come out of debt trap we want to invest we want to borrow so many things but then who has taught us today in financial freedom app you have that one university you get to learn everything please please spend some time to learn it because you should not be cheated by someone if you lose your hard earned money once then you will lose that motivation to earn more money please don't make this mistake i want you to understand how to manage money because no one can manage your money better than you so please start learning download the app right away i'll be back with another video soon thanks for watching be wise get rich